Thank you, Dr. Lyles, for those encouraging words. And remember, raising the bar. It's something we can all do together and have great results. Now, as we've said, each of you has a story about why you're in the classroom and what it means to you. And each year at our opening meeting, we do hear from a parent. Today, that parent is a volunteer at PS81 in District 24 in Queens. She's been there for six years. She's a busy mother, a busy community member uh, who's very active in her hometown. Uh, one child in college, another a fourth grader. She's very committed to learning leaders. Please welcome Lydia Martinez. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to share my story, uh, a little bit of my story from last year. I chose to become a learning leader because I like to teach children how to read. In my opinion, when you can read, all the other subjects in school are easier to understand. At PS81, I've come in contact with many parents who were not able to finish middle school, therefore making it very difficult to help their children with schoolwork, even in their own language. I have seen and felt the frustration of the parents and the child. My need to help was so great that in the year 2000, 2002, when given the opportunity to take the learning leaders training with Marilyn Shimon, I did not hesitate. Community service is a strong interest for me. This is my seventh year serving as a PTA president, and last year I was president of President's Council for District 24. I also serve on Community Board 5, the Neighborhood Advisory Board, and I'm on the Board of Directors of New Life Head Start and Daycare Center. Working with the teachers and students of PS81 has been the most gratifying and rewarding experience I've had. When I walk into a classroom, the children want to sit with me and are interested in what I have in my bag to make learning fun. I usually carry beads, blocks, books, pictures, flashcards, paper, pencils, crayons. Nothing beats seeing the smile on a child's face that wants to learn. Last year, a first grade teacher asked me to work with her ELL class. A couple of weeks after school started, a girl from Pakistan who knew no English came into the class. When I was introduced to her by her teacher, I could see the fear in her eyes, but yet she had the most beautiful smile. Immediately, my heart melted for this child. I felt so bad that I was not able to communicate with her and assure her that everything would be all right. Whenever I walked into the classroom, she would smile at me. I would walk over to say hello, and how are you doing today? She did not understand me. A couple of days later, a girl from Ecuador came into the class. When I was introduced to this girl, I could see the same fear in her eyes. Only, this girl did not have a smile on her face. She had the saddest expression I had ever seen on a first grader. My thoughts was that I could help this girl learn English, but her sadness worried me. The teacher asked me to work with the two girls because they needed extra help. With the Pakistani girl, I used a lot of sign language, but I couldn't get the interest of the Ecuadorian girl. One day, while in the lunchroom, I saw the Pakistani girl and the Ecuadorian girl talking and smiling. I walked over, but before I could get close to the other, before I could get close, the other children came over to me to show me that the girls were friends. The children commented, they are talking and they don't understand each other. I walked over to the girls and the Pakistani girl pointed to her new friend. She looked happy and excited. I walked over to the Ecuadorian girl and told her in Spanish that I was glad that she had a friend. I asked her, what are you two talking about? She said, we're not talking, we're playing. <laughs> By this time, the Ecuadorian girl's smile was gone. I asked her if she was happy. If she had any friends in the class, she said no. I miss my country and my school. When is my teacher taking us to the pool? I said, oh no, sweetheart, in the summer you go with mommy to the pool. We don't have a pool in our school. She said in Ecuador I had swimming class, art class, and recreation. I didn't have to sit for so long. I don't like it here. 
Well, I said to her, here in New York, school is very different. And I understood why she always seemed so sad. After a few weeks, however, the girls were learning English and their friendship continued to blossom. This year, most of the, those children are in the same second grade class. They informed me that the Pakistani girl went back to Pakistan over the summer. The Ecuadorian girl came over to say hi and gave me a hug. The children asked me if I will be their teacher again this year. And when I see them in the morning, they take out their notebooks to show me their homework. When a child proudly shows me a project or homework is when I feel the proudest to be a learning leader. Through learning leaders, I have also been able to help the parents at PS81. I, along with Mrs. Chung, another learning leader, translate parent workshops into Spanish given at our school by Patrick Scott, our learning leader coordinator, our parent coordinator, Jane Florino, and Patrick work to meet the needs of our school. Every workshop has been special, and we all feel comfortable around one another. After working with learning leaders, one of our parents, Mrs. Pollyann Austin, was inspired to get her GED and go on to college. My experience as a learning leader has also taught me how to help my own children with their academics. My oldest son is in his second year of college at Marist. I have a seventh grade Grade. I have a son in seventh grade and a daughter in sixth, and my youngest son is a fourth grader. I know the tools my children need to learn, and I provide them with these tools. My favorite and their least favorite is the dictionary. <laughs> when they are doing homework and ask a question, I love to say, look it up in the dictionary. I'm very proud to say that my children are doing very well in school. I would like to thank learning leaders for making it possible for me to make a difference in the lives of the children and parents that I have serviced for the past six years. Thank you.